Hey, hey, what's up everybody? It's Rutech. Today we're talking about the best $700 gaming PC you can build in 2023. So you may be wondering, what are these little bottles you've been seeing in my previous videos in YouTube Shorts? This is Magic Mind, and it's a shot drink that'll boost your whole day. So I've been drinking one of these every morning for the past four days, and it's already drastically changed my workflow. Now, I love doing YouTube as my job. Editing videos is great. Filming videos is great, but it gets really tedious, and that makes it tiring. And of course, coffee helps, caffeine helps, but caffeine can have some negative side effects, right? For some, it gives you anxiety, gives you headaches, and then sometimes it makes you have to rush over to the bathroom. And you know, I still love coffee, but with Magic Mind, you pretty much get all the good effects of coffee without those bad side effects, plus some health benefits. They print them right here on the label. You get matcha, which obviously boosts your energy, adaptogens, which are good for relaxation, nootropics, which keep you focused, and immunity, which means vitamin C, D, and echinacea, which is a flower herb that has a lot of health benefits. Now, how about flavor? You might've noticed this is like a weird green color. It looks like one of those gross health drinks, but I can assure you it does not taste like those gross health drinks. It has a minty fruity flavor. It actually tastes really good. Either way, if you want a healthy alternative to coffee, if coffee's not doing it for you anymore, like me, or you just want a drink that gets your health up every morning, I highly, highly recommend Magic Mind, and you can find the link to it in my description. So let's get started first with the B550 Gaming Gen 3 from MSI. This is a very solid gaming oriented motherboard that's reliable, has good upgradability, and solid VRM cooling. In the box you'll also find a variety of different things, but we'll only need two of them, being the IO shield and the M2 screw. Now let's direct our attention to the chosen CPU of this PC, the Ryzen 5 5600. The Ryzen 5600 is a lovely 6-core, 12-thread CPU that'll not just do great in gaming, but also every other task that you may throw at it. Before we install the CPU, place that motherboard directly on top of its box, which is just for static electricity reasons. Next up, find the golden triangle on the bottom left of the Ryzen CPU and pair it up with the golden triangle printed on the motherboard. Pretty much just have that golden triangle facing the top left. Once the CPU is secure in its socket, lower the lever until it clicks back into place. Next up, we have the RAM, which is XPG's Gamex D4. It'll be 16 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz CL16 RAM. 16 gigs is more than enough for modern gaming. This RAM will be installed in the second and fourth slot, so lower those retention tabs and click the RAM in place using your two thumbs in this fashion. With that all done, now it's time for the storage. We first have to move this anchor screw over. I'm actually pretty surprised I had to move this screw. Usually it's in the right spot for your average sized M2. Anyway, the SSD I chose is the Silicon Power NVMe A60 one terabyte SSD. One terabyte should be plenty, but considering Jedi Survivor just came out and it's 130 gigabytes, I would not put it past you if you went ahead and got two terabytes or something in the middle. Anyway, after you put the SSD into its slot, you'll want to get that screw from earlier that came out of that motherboard box to fasten in the SSD. Now it's time to install the CPU cooler, so remove these two brackets surrounding the CPU. By the way, how do you guys like this new lighting in my videos? It took a while to set up and to figure out what worked and what didn't work, but if you guys aren't a fan, please let me know in the comments. Now we remove those two brackets, but make sure you keep the back plate, which is the metal piece sitting underneath the motherboard, because that's what we're fastening the CPU cooler to. Also, if you're wondering how or why my CPU cooler is white, I just went ahead and gave it a little spray paint job. It's super easy and there's a great tutorial for it online, and I'll leave the link to that in my description. And don't forget to plug the CPU cooler cable into the CPU fan header on the top of the motherboard. And that does it for our motherboard prep, and it's looking pretty snazzy. Now let's move on to the case, the Fractal Pop Air. And I'm really glad I chose this case as the finished product looks absolutely beautiful, which you probably already saw in the intro. Now this is totally optional, but I'm going to remove all the included fans as I'm going to replace them with ones with RGB. If you're trying to save about 40 bucks though, you can totally skip this step and use the included ones. But anyway, this rear fan is pretty weird. Once you remove all the screws, you actually have to cut the wire off because Fractal decided to fasten the wire using an unremovable metal brace. Luckily though, these front two fans come 
come right off. Also, I forgot to show you guys, you can just remove that front panel off the front of the case. It pops right off. You don't have to unscrew anything. Just takes a little pulling. Now the fans are off, but the wires are pre-managed by Fractal. So you're going to have to remove all these twisty ties in order to fully remove the fans. Now let's direct our attention to the RGB fans of choice, the five pack of white fans from Asia Horse. These particular fans are great because not only are they ARGB, but you can also control the fan speed using the remote. We won't need to do this because the fan hub connects to a PWM header, but it's just nice to have because if you're like me, maybe you wanna control the fan speed using a remote instead of a fan curve. And if you're wondering why, I don't really have an answer. It's just kind of fun. Anyway, right now we're only going to install two of the fans. Make sure the fans are installed in this exact orientation. Otherwise you're going to be pushing air out of the computer and we're fastening these fans using screws that came in the fan box. We'll come back for these later. Now let's install the IO shield. This is that metal piece that came in the motherboard box. Now with the IO shield, all you really have to do is apply even pressure on all four sides until it clicks into place. Now before we install the motherboard, we have to retrieve the proper screws, which can be found in the power supply bay. So now take your motherboard and slowly lower it into place. And the easiest way to do this is to line the IO up with the IO shield. And these are the screws we'll be using to fasten the motherboard coming out of that bag we just grabbed a second ago. And if I remember correctly, there's eight total screws you need to use to fasten in this motherboard. But if I'm wrong, there's a diagram on your screen. Now it's time to install the power supply, the EVGA 500BR. Power supplies are a little iffy right now. The ones I'd usually choose are almost always out of stock. And as you guys might know, you don't wanna mess around when picking out a power supply. So I'll have three or four different reliable power supply options in my description. Don't worry, they all install the exact same. Anyway, take your power supply and make sure the fan is facing the bottom of the case. Place it into its bay, and then using the four included screws, fasten it into place. Now this PC at its peak will consume around 300 watts, so you do have a good bit of room for upgrading. So if you wanna upgrade any of the parts down the road, you can, of course, within reason. Now let's talk about the cable extensions and plugging everything in. So the cable extensions are totally optional. All you really have to do is connect the extensions to their proper counterpart. For example, this 24 pin power connector coming out of the power supply gets connected to its extension and the male end of the extension cable goes into the connector on the motherboard. And again, it's optional. If you just wanna use the included cables with the power supply, you can. Next up is the CPU connector same deal you take the extension cable connect it to the cable coming out of the power supply and then route it through this top right cutout and plug it into the top left connector on the motherboard Now that we have the two primary power connectors plugged in, we're going to move on to the front panel connectors which come out of the front of the case starting with these tiny F panel cables these get routed through this bottom metal cutout and they'll get plugged into their designated pins. The connector is labeled F panel, but these little cables go into very specific pins and I'll have a diagram on the screen for you. Next cable from the front panel is the HD audio cable. This will get routed through the bottom right cutout and it gets plugged into the very bottom left connector on the motherboard. Also coming out of the front panel will be this cable, which is the USB 3.0 cable, and that gets plugged into the connector to the left of the F panel cables. Now we're gonna finish off the fans, starting with the rear exhaust fan. Be sure to install it in this exact orientation. Otherwise, this exhaust fan will be pushing air in instead of out, and then route its cable through this top cutout. Next up, the top two exhaust fans, install them in this exact orientation, and fasten them in place using those same fan screws. And this PC is looking absolutely beautiful so far, but we still have a little ways to go. Take all those fan connectors coming from the front and the back, and then get your fan hub, which came with the Asia Horse fans. We'll be plugging all of these fans into the fan hub. It doesn't matter which fan gets plugged in where. Once that's done, let's adhere the fan hub to the back of the case. Of course, this is optional. If you wanna manage the hub and put it somewhere else, it's totally up to you. Now we're going to plug two additional cables into the fan hub, starting with this PWM cable that came with the fans. This gets plugged into the bottom connector. And then this other cable that came with the fans, this will be where the power comes from. Take the smaller end and plug it into the fan hub, and then take the other end and plug it into one of the SATA power connectors coming out of the power supply.
And let's not forget about that other cable we just plugged in. That'll get routed through this bottom middle cutout. And then we'll get plugged into the header labeled System Fan 2. And now for the part you've probably been waiting for, the XFX Swift 210 RX 6600 with 8GB of VRAM. This is a 1080p and 1440p beast. You can expect to play all modern titles at ultra settings and some titles at 4K, which you'll see in the benchmark section of the video. But yeah, you don't have to use this particular 6600 from XFX. I just chose this one because I've used it before and it did great and it also has phenomenal cooling. Before we install the graphics card, we have to do a few things. We have to loosen these two screws so we can remove these two PCIe brackets. Then we have to make sure we remove this rubber bumper from the PCIe connector and then push down the PCIe retention tab. Then install it into its slot. You'll know it's properly installed when the PCIe retention tab clicks down. And then fasten it into place using that screw we just removed from the PCIe bracket. And last but not least, give it some power using its PCIe power connector. And now we can put everything back together, remove all the stickers from the glass, carefully put the glass panel back on and the rear panel, and this PC is ready to have Windows installed. First up, we need to get Windows onto a USB drive. So find a USB drive that is at least 8GB in size and plug it into another Windows device. On that computer, you'll want to Google Windows 10 ISO and then click the first Microsoft.com link that comes up. The link to the site is also in my description. Scroll down and click download tool now. And when it's downloaded, run the file. It'll load a little bit and it'll want you to agree to its license terms, click accept, and after that, you'll want to make sure you select Create Installation Media, and then click Next. Ensure that all of these options are correct, and then click Next. Select USB flash drive, and then select the drive that you have plugged into your computer. And now it'll install the boot media onto that drive. When that finishes, put the USB into the new computer, and then press the boot button. You'll then be taken to this screen. Make sure all the options are correct, and then click Next and Install Now. For now, just click I don't have a product key and then select either Windows 10, Home, or Pro. Then you'll want to read the applicable notices and license terms at least 20 to 30 times, click Accept, and then Next. Then click Custom Install Windows Only, and select the only drive that should show up, which is our crucial P3. Click Next one last time and it'll install Windows. After installing Windows, it'll restart and then take you to this screen, which I don't really need to walk you through. You just put your name, your password, security questions, things like that. But anyway, now we're running an unactivated version of Windows. So head over to digitalchillmart.com, my personal favorite place to get Windows 10 licenses, and then select the version of Windows that you installed. Not only are these prices way cheaper than retail price, but if you use coupon code RUTEC, you get 50% off. Once they email you the code, go to the search bar, type in activation settings, click the first result, and then select change or enter product key, and then enter your license key. Now that Windows is activated, let's turn on XMP to make sure our RAM is running at max speed. Boot up the PC, spam the F2 or delete key until you're taken to this page, and then click the XMP profile button. Then you can click this button at the top to save and exit. And lastly, for drivers, I'll have the links to all necessary drivers for this computer in my description. And last but certainly not least, we have the benchmarks. So for today's benchmarks, we're going to be looking at Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, Apex Legends, and Fortnite. Like I said, this is a 1080p and 1440p oriented PC that can run some titles in 4K, whether it's native or using FSR 2.1. Obviously, in most cases, you won't be able to run 4K at 16 above FPS, but when you can, you'll have to tweak the graphics settings and maybe run FSR 2.1. All right, for the rest of this segment, I'll play some music from Matri Beats, and I'll see you guys in the outro.
So that will wrap it up for today's build tutorial video. If you enjoyed it, drop a like, have any comments or questions, drop a comment below or join my discord link will be in the pinned comment. And of course, if you enjoy the content you're seeing, I would really appreciate it if you dropped a sub. Thanks for watching. Peace out.